Hi to everyone, it's Kalen from the Poker I Mania. We today have a six man coaching, six man tour turbos. Buy ins are from uh, $1.5 $1 to $15 so far, I think. And I now have five tables running and a few, few more coming probably soon. In here with the Jack 10 shooter, it's four way pot. I think this rake has really often AX here when he see bets into empty side pot. We do have like backdoor flush draw and five outs to two pairs of trips, but I don't really see point to continue still because I would assume that we are always behind. It just doesn't make much sense for Button to bluff into empty side pot and he's not value betting worse, I think so. And if the audio and video side works correctly, please say so in the chat. A6 here, shoot that I could feel limping also, but I think of shoot A6 I can just fold here. Uh, if I ISO race here, it will often end just into two or two or three way flop and the hand doesn't play that well so open check nine board is pretty drawy so I will I will be betting it over half pot and in here I could try to stab this pot down I think I can get Oleg to fold pretty often with two barrels so if this small blind does fold, I can. I will win that pot pretty often. But I think once once this small blind call, he often has has something on the board, and he's really fizzy looking. So I'm not trying to get him away from the pot. But I think stepping the flop is totally fine. And six man games overall, if we compare it, compare it to nine man game, of course the evident difference is that there's only six players on the table and what that practically means is that we have more late position situation where we are in the unopened pot for example, so stealing is more important than in the nine man format. Especially now that there is and is also also in the game. In here we'll line three but so big that I can't really be set mining and stacking off with sixes would be would be really spooky. <coughs> so have to be folding. And other big difference in the nine men is of course the price structure itself. So in, in these games it's 65 and 35. So it's more top heavy. And that means that the ICM itself is going to be smaller. Uh, will I check here? I can try to bet. His, it might be that he doesn't fold like AX, but I think we can get a lot of, lot of other stuff to fold. And I think we can even think of double barreling to get those AX to fold. In here, pretty easy call on the turn. If he continues on the river, then it's a bit more ugly because plus draw did complete. He can be value betting queen x pretty easily. 
still. I think I will call once more and fold if he fires third barrel because, well, in here Ace King suited. I'm going to be shoving. He can be barreling like some one one diamond hands here or some Ace Six. So I called because of that. So I would have folded the third barrel. In here I three bet. Three bet pre flop and I'm going to stack up on that flop. And around 200 is totally fine. See betting size here in the three way pot, uh, three bet pot. Even like 180 or so would be fine. So everything works. Thanks for Kauris for commenting. <coughs> and seems we lost that Ace King shooter shooter hand where we face that 4x open. I think it was pretty standard. In here we can think of for betting for bet bluffing sometimes. But I'm just giving up. Calling with ace and when off is not going to be good because even if we hit we can easily be dominated and and of course we don't really hit that often with a7 off. Queen Jack is a bit, bit weak here to call. I think like King Jack I would be calling probably. And on the right table we have to be calling the small blind. We just get pretty great price. Pretty close one to two so. And has enough equity. Jack 6, this player doesn't fall that hugely, so I think I'm just giving up here. But pretty close, like Jack 8, Jack 7, I would, I would be playing really often. Here I could also, yeah, I saw a little bit smaller, like 125 would be totally fine as well. But definitely I saw raising this pot and we hit much here. Really unlikely players would have ace king type of hand, really. <coughs> I'm going to see if it's small because considering the stack sizes. I can easily get, get it in. Checking would be okay, but there is plus draw, so see betting is fine as well. And if players have some sort of pocket pairs, they usually would not be folding to single bet, I think, so there is good chance to get value. Deuce is here, two players calling. Small blind has been pretty tight as well. I think I just give up here. The Siba thing would not be horrible either because if they don't have ace, they will fold decently often. And of course, sometimes we might end up having the best hand even if it goes checked. <coughs> it's pretty rare at all, but. This time it did happen. <coughs> so we have five tables. Seems like those are not starting. Uh, well, that thirty dollar game is. Have three wrecks already and only three players registered, so let's keep some sort of table selection. And the ICM side on these six maxes, it's pretty close to what you would have in nine men three handed. 
because if you think that these have 65, 35 structure, then the nine men basically have 66 less 33. And here with this other player calling, I'm folding, but I would have have to call against the button alone, I think. <coughs> well, the small blind had the same hand, pretty loose call for him. Him in that spot. Ace Jack will line three X has been pretty passive. I think flatting is okay. Folding would be little bit weak, I think, because we don't have that big sample on the middle lane. And not really the greatest board. I think we have enough tables with, with these games. It's it's quite quite good amount of hands coming. We hit a jack, we have checked check three times, so I think I have best hand here. I'm going to be betting small to try and get some A high to hero call. And here we checked with a bit bigger club draw, I would be semi bluffing here, but I think with this I will just check. King 5 suited. I think it's okay to be opening. And here we do hit. And when the wreck doesn't sit, bet the turn, I think he really often has better better flush here. I, even a bit higher betting. Bet sizes, size would have been fine, probably, but definitely betting. No action for the ace king. And here on the right table we have pretty active chip leader. We are clear second stack, so it's kind of a spot where I don't want to be too widely playing against him. Even here opening is questionable it's because of this situation. Ace three is pretty trashy hand to play against ship leader here even though he can have a lot of weaker stuff but playability of that hand is really crappy queen check off against this sizing i'm probably just folding uh, sixes should be opened Seven nine, we have a gut shot. In here, it's pretty close. Whatever we can be shoving, I think shoving is going to be better than open folding. Even though it's horrible if the chip leader does find the hands call, but. But it should be so, so rare situation that he does call that I think shoving will be a bit better. And in here we plop a monster draw. And I'm happy to get it in if you like so desire, but of course getting fold is not bad either. In here I'm going to bet small and try to lure the villain line into pot. And in here, this has been pretty... It's not a great spot for us to be laying that hand. So let's bet that before it goes to time bank. And kind of bad card, but of course we are never folding or checking this spot. And he had two pairs, pretty passively played, I think. Check raising the flop would have been really... Really good play for the build line. In here I'm going to call 
If I forfeit, I don't get action from the weaker hands that much. Of course, the advantage is that we less often end up folding in flop, for example. And they did collide here, but they, what they had. Yeah, kings. I thought so that it was not, not the greatest of spots. Hey, queen, king, king, queen, I can be just showing with that stack, stack depth. And on the other bottom table, I thought that I have best hand often enough to call the flop. Now we did hit the ace. And there is some busted draws I might be having, so I bet relatively big tier. And in here, I think I can be raising against this really small Donk bet will land uses again. But now he does come over. Well, there is some risk that he would be playing weaker king like this, but I think there's also some danger that I would expect this to be really, really rarely a bluff overall. Pretty rare situation that they don't bet small two times and then come over, I would say. In right table hitting practical nuts in limp spot. Ace 9 suited, pretty active looking player. I'm going to call here, it's pretty much the bottom of my range though. Definitely leading the queen three here on the limp spot. I think this button player especially will will defend a lot. And the small point raises basically only hand I'm scared of in there is king queen. And I think he might be having some draws or king ten type of hand, so I can't really be folding. Folding tear. Even King Queen might have might have raised. And he did have a draw tear. And we got huge pot. And sorry for I did I haven't noticed the in here we line the donk patch peak. I'm going to shove here. We have a lot of equity even if he doesn't fold. And I think there's some some possibilities that I might be folding even some better hand and versus Rec King Jack Shooter is nuts. <coughs> and really good flop for us. So the Twitch question, oh, not that, that one, but and you know, asking player differences. Well, for example, if the villain is Tyke Turt, then I would accept, assume him to be calling, calling the. Shoves, then we can go wider than Nash. If we are, for example, in IC in some ICM heavy spot, and Villain should be really tight because of ICM, it might be reasonable to expect him to call wider, wider than the Nash would assume. And of, of, of course, in the calling situations. In the calling situations also versus recreational players it's often really good idea to be to be calling tighter than Nash. And Jack is nuts for us in this stack situation. 
And if Villain is likely too tight, we can be shoving any two in that spot. But versus good player, I would not be shoving all the crappy hands. It would be just better to be open folding, folding some of those. Pocket fives here, we can be set mining mostly. I think shoving with these these deep stacks and not that loose loose looking player will be will not be that great. I will just check it and see if I happen to win the pot and fold. We have flush draw, but it's only five high, so it doesn't really have value that much. And in here with the king queen, I'm going to defend against this three, but because of the playability of the hand. Pocket force, easy show. And he does bet pretty huge, but we have a lot of equity in here. And could have small, small folding equity. So I think I will go. I don't love the situation with the size he's using, but. And he did have weaker hand on the pre-flop, but did outflop us. I think with the two over open ender and backdoor flush draw, we just have a bit too high, a bit too high equity in tier to be folding. But it's kind of tricky with his sizing because he's not not folding that often, most likely. In here I could be limping, BP looks like a player who is easily calling ISO race as well, so that won't be working that often. And against race T small we can easily defend, defend by calling flop is basically absolutely horrible for us, bottom pair in Monotone pork, so easy fold. Especially when he see bets on, on the three way pot. <coughs> Completed here on the with the suited king. Not really hitting, so I will just check fold. Queen six suited, pretty loose player. <sighs> yes, effect anti anti adjust by six pp. I think I'm calling here. Should be one hand to mark, but I think it's reasonable call, not something we can ever be happy happy about. It's marginal anyway. And could be a little too wide, especially when we don't have a wreck reach on the guy, but he was really loose, so not totally sure of that hand. And here we are on the bubble. A three of. I think I'm just folding here. Shoving is not going to be profitable. And seven three just folding. Ace 9, we can open show or we can min race and call against the small blind. I think I'm going for min race call this time. And here, when we hit two pairs, we have pretty nutty hand. In here, this type player. 
calls, I don't see much of reason to be betting. Of course, by betting we would protect our hand, but it's kind of tough to get called by called by a horse hand. Of course, some weaker ace, for example, or some draw might have called turn, but I'm pretty happy to just check down. And if we do see bet the flop, I think. With those stack sizes, see that folding would be pretty, pretty horrendous. Ace eight. I think I'm going to min race and call if the BB is. Um, it's pretty close. <coughs> and again, kind of situation that. Is there much merit in c betting? There are some drawing combos which can pretty easily check out with that stack depth. I'm going to be calling his bet. 5-8. And ace check I'm going to be calling. He sometimes has some trap but Egg 9 is pretty on the borderline with the stack setup, but I think it's still better to be shoving than folding. Limpin might be option. Unfortunately, he wake up with with a monster. And King A2, the really limping happy player. Again, pretty marginal spot. A6 shooter, really active player, passive BP player. This is pretty standard. 3 pet shoving spot, the will line open raising range is just, just, so, so, just so wide that we will get huge amount of folks here. Especially when the BP is this looking player that button doesn't really doesn't have to be worried that the BP would be 3 betting wide. So it should widen his is min raising range quite a bit. And ace check so we get called by king 9. And this is sort of hand we can also, if the BB had 3, but we might be 4 bet showing sometimes. King 5, really loose player. I think we can actually even solve the hand here because the wheel line range is so wide and the hand doesn't have huge amount of playability post flop. <coughs> like King 5 shooter, I would be more happy to be calling compared to this hand. And in here, quite draw with port overall. We hit the queen. We could also take check check calling line here on the flop. Four of diamond is a bit ugly. From the drawing compose we beat like King Jack. This does look really value heavy bet. And I don't think we line would take line like that that often with with like King 10 probably so I think we are too often beat here overall. If he doesn't make some really loose floating plays and so on, but if the diamond draw had the flush draw had not completed, I would have prob probably called that one, but and here I checked. 
goes twice checked, so I think we have best hand really often. So I could bet here for protection and value. This player I think at least once before did check fold when he checked the flop, so if he does check here I'm going to stab. Check 9 suited, shoving if the button folds. And 6 is shoving. Five subbing here on the bubble again. Mm. Well, I could try to min race and can't be calling with king check. is for shooter. Well, after that we don't need to think about calling. But before the small blind call it would have been reasonable to call with the shooter ace. And again running into big hand. Here with the queen 5 suited we can solve this because we cover enough from the from the BB I would say that he would not be not be calling that wide. In here we do beat some drawing compos. No reads on the wheel lane. I think spot where we can call can fold. Well, quite quite loose value bet from this guy. Not something I would expect to see that often. Pretty easy, so ten check. Villain has been three betting sometimes earlier, pretty much. So I could be limping that hand. Definitely don't want to be race folding and flop pretty great two overs and flush draw. We see that he has been opening almost any two in this 60 hand sample. <coughs> Not using limping that much. On this flop I will be check calling. We could check check race as well, but there's not that much draws on the flop. King Jack, I'm just shoving on the upper right. I think this limper will really often fold and the small blind will fold basically always, I would say. <coughs> and in here we could have some plus uh, straight draws also missing, so I think we like, can quite easily call with 
9x, 7x, and so on. If he wants to do something like that. And in here I can see that if club comes I can think of double barreling. Because there's still not huge amount of strong combos on that flop will I can have. Ace-10 is pretty interesting because when the villain solves, I think his range is going to be it's going to be capped somewhat. So I think I will take this pot. <coughs> and King Queen, I chose to three bet call because he has been opening basically any two. So I think King Queen is strong enough to take that line. But of course we could also just flat his open and go from tier. But I would expect that he can be shoving weaker hands. We can get caught by a lot of weaker hands and so on. So it's possible line to be three but calling tier. And sevens easy snap call. Good play by the middle lane. Really not hand he wants to be race folding. Other option would be to would be to limp the hand, but shoving is the standard line. Let's take some of the smaller games as well. So for example here we have pretty unknown kind of recreational types so I would not be necessarily wanting to go with trash hand any two shoves. For example here I would have min raised or limp and, or make a limp and go play. Both would be reasonable. We get called here. We can see that, but we should be see that calling ten, or we can check. I think both are fine. Now he checks again, so I would decrease quite a lot of usually top pair kind of hands. Sometimes he might have those, but I think we can be value betting, possibly get hero called by some king high type of hands. He probably doesn't have huge amount of AX when he does call. But turn pet pet is also kind of protection. That we don't give the free 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 river card when we have best hand pretty often. And we win pets one third of spot here. Well, I don't know. Doesn't seem like he would have, have weaker hands often at all, probably. And like here we know that Villan is passive so far, so I'm pretty happy to be just race folding hand like this. <coughs> we could also limp even against him, but he's likely to play too tight. Too tight against the race, so I think we can get make out of profit by min raising any two most likely. In here I went for <laughs> limp and co play. And pretty weird spot. We line don't bets three times the pot. <laughs> Might be some six X or some draw. I will give up. He has been defending a lot so far, but I still, I still try if he plays against. If he if he's still not folding, then he probably 
is not folding as much as I would assume. He now makes again flying like that, so I think in future we want to be looser, looser calling those donk shoves because he seems to be doing a lot of those. <coughs> and we didn't get fold, I'm just giving up. Twitch in Twitch saying that looks like I'm playing Zoom. No, I'm playing six men. Not the best flop, but let's try to stab once. In here I could three bet and fold against against uh, four bet from the open racer. Good side of this is that we have this flat caller here who is quite often going to call even if this open racer guy is. And again we face weird donk pet subs. Well not so much we can do. And again, well after I have seen this, I should have probably called the ace 10 on the first time. <clears throat> it doesn't really make sense to make that sort of donk sub place with pretty much anything. He could get us for value from us, us much more by check raising if he wants to get it in on the flop, give us space for making c bets and so on. And in here, let's hope he makes similar play. Well, no, now he folds. <laughs> and in here, we can check race, we can just check call. Both are reasonable. And he doesn't let us sleep either, so we could also try to trap him by limping some premiums. He doesn't solve. <coughs> okay. We could also see pet, but again, ugly situation if we face check race. going to be calling and call any turn. Let's just give him possibility to bluff. Now if we solve, there is not probably that many hands which can call. So I think check calling will still be better. Well he did have ace so it might have called. I 
and actually thinking how passive he has been pre-flop, it would have probably been actually better to show the turn. Because his range is going to be going to be a bit better. He gives us pretty nice pot odds. We have backdoor flush draw. I think it's a bit weak to be folding. We can have best hand decent amount of time. And ace queen. Definitely petting here. And flush dusk. Does come here, but with pot size behind, I'm not not making any sort of hero hero folds here. And really, really optimistic player who does get here this time. And these small pocket pairs are going to be best just by shoving. Basically, always. Pretty unlucky heads up here overall. Well, in here we can get decent amount of folds, folds by C betting, and in here pretty clear how this limping player can even call with weaker stuff, I would assume. Well, he has the same hand. Check, I'm just well, we can check, but I think this sort of hand is kind of good to be just checking. And if we miss a flop, we end up folding pretty much. So I'm pretty happy to be shoving here. And in here, I go for pretty small four bet and stack off. And it's spot where I will have. Three uh, four bet bluffs as well, so it's not like I always have the nuts here. For example, some weak offsuit aces would be decent to four bet small as a bluff. In here, I think he's really rarely going to be folding with these stack sizes, so I will actually fold. Well, in the 7-8 hand, we can either check or bet, bet here on the turn and pretty much check the river. Of course, if he happens to check race on the turn, it's kind of ugly, but... And 10-9, pretty nice hand to be just checking on the flop. And 
put in here Well, this player can have quite much of just over cards, so I could try to double barrel that. <clears throat> Most of time I would not, not try to that, because I think quite often they have ending into a quite ugly spots. Again, I think he's really really value heavy range here most often tables running that's pretty okay in here with the nine and anti obsessive blinds I can be showing that hand Pocket trees with this sort of stack depth, it's pretty clear open sum. And Jack is quite quite a uh, blank card tier. When when thinking of the villain range, it's it's unlikely that it, it has improved. So we can be pretty pretty nicely value betting our pair. And a glitter guard card tear. Check ten. It's going to be on the borderline. Without Andy's it would not be not be a show, but with Andy's thinking that we have seven on the adjusted big blinds, it's okay. And pretty similar to this hand, I would say. King, we have back back door flush draw. I think C betting is going to be better than check folding or check calling. So the will line doesn't doesn't like to be folding to C bets probably. Four dos here. I'm going to call, but it's not great spot because because basically all the deck is bad for us or not not improving us. <laughs> but it's just so common line that will line will bet the flop, uh, check limp pre flop and try to step as I have been doing as well. But main problem here on the river is that he can be value betting a lot of stuff, like 7x even here. So it's quite tough to be calling anymore. 
And that's kind of reason why I don't love the flop call situation that much. And 7 is really marginal defend, but he did basically min race, so not that horrible to defend either. In here against some players we could be driven bluffing, but this player seems pretty passive. Quite passive and pretty unknown overall, so not something I I would like to do. And flipping here, hopefully we don't hit a check. And five four shooted here. It's going to be really close because of the equity the hand has, but this player has been really passive, so I'm just folding. And seven queen with with how short our stack is. I could try to make stop and go and hope he happens to fold something. It's going to be pretty unlikely, but might happen sometimes. Like one PB deeper, we could easily easily fold. And I should have probably set mind with the six east here. King nine, kind of kind of nasty that if the PB subs, it's going to be fold, but. And has some blocker value. If we face a call, we can we still have a decently playing hand. Really passive player, three betting huge. And in here we get such good potards that I'm going to be race calling. <sighs> really ugly spot here. Because of how passive the villain lane looks. And there is quite much of ICM. ICM side in play as well. It's just often spot I think that villain will have his reins crushing us. us. So if that is true then... Then we can't do anything but fold. But of course, considering that we open from bottom, ace jack is pretty strong hand. I think shoving will, dip, will be the best line with that sort of stack depth. If we min raise this small blind guy might be calling us more often. Best hand pre-flop but didn't help this time. In here I think I'm just... Have to be nitty because this big stack might, might try to abuse us if we... Open loose. And he anyway he probably doesn't want to be folding folding that much. And versus this big size, I'm just going to be folding here. Three nine, we could could go for three, but bluff actually when the will line is has been opening so much. But of course, folding is not 
not mistake either. And in here I could mix it up a bit and just flat call with the kings. Ace flop comes but the king is here as well. In here I don't really see reason to be check raising. It's also a board where we line might, might think we don't really have AX that much and try to parallel us off. And if he has something like ace 10, I think he's pretty happily value betting, even with lot, even with ace 4, it seems. I think it's spot where it would be better for the villain to be checking the turn, at least. Five queen. A7, well the villain on that sample has been folding some amount against three bets, so let's try. We have bit of kicker problem, so I'm just calling the flop and not, not raising for value. And he checks now. I would assume that he would, would bet like... But it's kind of tough, or could, could be kind of tough to get value either. He might have better ace sometime, uh, 10 sometimes, so... Just check. In here I chose to check call and try if he wants to be bluffing. Bluffing the pot. I think with this stack depth we can't really really give up our hand, but I think we can get value but from this sort of player more by making the passive line. But he did have the bigger ace. King 10 small blind seems pretty pretty wrecky type, so I'm pretty happy to be shoving the hand. You can give comment on the a7 for example, would you have been 3 betting pre flop? Uh, what line would you take post flop and so on? Jack then will line checks the flop. He might have some eight x but I'm going to be value betting. He might still have like nine x, some ace high. He's calling and so on. Jack Doos is going to be kind of outside the nest as a shoving hand. I could try what he does against Ming Race. And not great flop for the Queens in 5 a pot. <laughs> we'll line 3 X's here. I would assume that I don't have really fold equity. But I think calling is going to be better than folding. And is still so strong overall. And in here we can check call or go for check raise. With this stack depth I think I'm going for check raise. And here with the king queen it's... Pretty interesting spot. Not really three, but happy villain overall. So I think I will be just folding. 
we could have limped actually when we don't raise call call against the bottom but uh, against the bb i should have said Hopefully he three bets now as well. And in here it's going to be quite tough for, for us to get value. Sometimes he might have like three eggs or some sort of pocket eggs for example, but quite often we will get folded here when he has some busted plus draw uh, he had hit the seven well ace ace seven suited should be something to snap fold pre-flop but good for us it was good good enough for him Seven tables and three more more coming should be enough. We might have actually won that pocket queen's hand, not sure sure if that did actually happen, but I think there was no bet at least, but of course someone might easily have like like for example King X here. Eight six BB is aggressive and short stack, so and button is loose, so not a good spot. Not a good spot. Here we flop two pairs. I think it's going to be good enough. We have pretty unknown players, so I'm going to be raising pretty good size. We definitely don't really want to be just flatting because because uh, how draw it at board is. And here I chose to check the flop. There's not huge amount of hands we can get value, and if they happen happen to have king x, we lose the minimum, and I think pretty much win the maximum overall. Because from the track, for example, I don't think we can often get three streets of value here by betting. And again, pretty weird line. He checked call twice and then lead the river. Of course it might be some king 5 type of hand. But quite maniac type of villain, so he might have some something weird as well, so yeah. Basically he's bluffing here on the river with that hand. <coughs> this should be somewhere else here. And defended 4-5 against pretty active looking player. I'm calling here with the bottom pair. Of course it's really ugly if the villain continues now. And basically no reason to be betting myself. Yeah, he was definitely calling the turn here. But if we defend 4 5 suited, then we can't be really folding that sort of flop.
Okay, seven is not much much info on the guy. I'm going to be defending this time from relatively late position open. And I think this it can be some bigger pocket, but I would usually assume that they would play other way hand like that, so I think I'm going to be calling here. Nine five lint pot passive looking player from preflop stats, so I want to be leading myself here and again trying step a limp and go. Let's see if it works this time. And in here we can go for. Well, I have at least marked him as a good player. He has 1 million VPP, so I think his range should be relatively wide. Wide preflop, even 3 betting tier. And definitely going for broke on this flop. 2 overs and plus draw. If he calls, I'm going to be shoving pretty much any turn. But I want to see that relatively small side so that he can try to try to do against something against us. In here we can three bet, but I doubt Will Line is folding that much, so let's just keep a bit of pot control. Small smaller pot because the hand won't be that often in great shape shape post flop king check i'm just shoving if he's inducing then so be it but i would also snap call against some from recky looking player here and well there is point in making that sort of play with with queen check in a way that if i call he's in pretty good shape but not really hand he should be inducing that much overall. So that king with the anties good player behind, I'm just shoving. It's going to be always profitable practically. In here we have pretty loose looking player, so I could go for check call. If he checks the turn, I can then value that river, but he can have some floats and this way I keep leave up door open for him to be playing those floats. And when he checks the turn, I quite often have the best hand, but I can easily get called by King X. And he actually have weak, weak ace here. But when the board is so dry, it's pretty tough to get three streets of value. And really spew we shove from the villa line over all tier. Namlock is active, it seems. Backdoor plus draw decent possibility to get the pot down by C betting, so let's see if it help pot. He doesn't fold, we don't get any extra equity, so I'm not going to I'm not going to be trying to barrel him off. He might have some weaker hands even some draws mostly. Well he he was kind of behind on the flop, but
And here, even though there is flush draw, I don't think Villain has anything that would connect would connect with the on the straight draws on that board. And on the turn we can bet again or check behind. I think both are kind of reasonable. Oh, no idea why there was four excising in here. Hopefully they fall because I can't really call even now. This was pretty pretty big mistake. For some reason there was higher sizing than there should have been. Well, I have 90 seconds of delay, so I think abusing that would be... is not going to be possible. Nine queen is reasonable to turn into bluff here. We have good amount of king and jack in our range, and we have ten as almost always an out. And I think that river is pretty decent. We could have easily, easily have some diamond draws. We could easily value bet like, for example, even jack, decent jack like jack. Ace Jack, for example, King X are in our valley range. So there is pretty nice amount of we what we could be value betting. But he decided to hero call this time. It's okay. And in here I'm betting again. There is still quite a quite lot of draws and Jack X can give value. River is pretty ugly because it's quite tricky to get call by sawing from the weaker stuff. And we have really tough time to be calling after checking either. So I think I would just check fold on that to River card. And here hitting the nuts, which is always nice. And ace queen, I'm going to be shoving here. And when will this will line check races here, he almost always has something he's going to be broke, going to broke. So no reason to get tricky here. Yeah. Quite basically just to set up tier post flop. Pretty standard for him to check race call with the top two. King ten. Villain shouldn't have huge amount of AX overall. Well, he can have some, but... Well, that pocket nines could be also small three, but... And Ace Queen, I'm just calling here. This opener is pretty passive looking. And in here we can go for three bet call against the button. And again running into quite a big hand. Really standard saw with our hand. 
and he was actually really passive, so it might not be that that great situation. But considering the stack stack depths overall, it's still pretty standard. And this will line donks again, even 10x went ahead of us now, so can't really see we could be calling anymore. So let's play these games to end and then do some hand analyzing. 8 9 here. It's going to be a bit too weak, so that we could easily solve. And in here again, kind of spot where we don't necessarily want to be seeping. Well, either way, both has problems and good sides. But when the board developed this way, it's quite likely he has something. Well, we had the same hand. 10-8, pretty easy defend against active player, but no hit to anything. King Jack, I'm just subbing for value. Jack six. Little bit be better would be easy, so that is on the borderline, I think. Like Jack eight, so that would be pretty easy. Well, the flop would have been pretty, pretty decent. <laughs> There might be that other guy making some sort of coaching or something as well when he's has been playing over 1 million VPPs and he's playing on 3.5 dollar. Of course it might be just new format also. Queen 10. Well, the main question basically here is, is it better to be shoving or... I think I'm going to just shove. Hand has so huge equity anyway that... Like queen then off, we could easily like min race hold. In here we could actually turn the ace 8 into bluff when the plus draw also complete, but we also have have best hand relatively often anyway against button player who has been pretty active. is here. I'm going for small three, but not really. Well, there was some some aggressive players as well. Jack nine suit that would be pretty decent. Decent times to re still here. And we hit into nuts in the bottom left table. <laughs> Aces as well. In the turn we can think of making like really small raise, but with these stacks I think flatting is also fine. We give space for the villain to 
continue pluffing if he has air. And now he checks. He can have easily like Jack X, which is going to be snap calling us. H6, I'm pretty happy to be shoving against 65 less, less 0 limper. He has a lot of crap. He can have also some premium spot. <laughs> but we will get folds often enough and he can call with some queen 10 or queen jack which is basically totally fine as well and 4-9 shooter is most likely going to be profitable Savo. Slash nine. I'm going for it. And here we have a lot stronger ace now, so we can much more easily go for three barrels for value here. The king deals. I think even this player probably is quite tight against against me in that spot. But the short stack wakes up this time. And easy call if the small blind subs on the bottom right. Is check calling button against. Big blind we can min raise as so an inducer as well. Pocket sixes. We can induce also, but if the small blind player wake up three betting, I'm not so sure if we, if we want to be race calling or race folding. And here is quite a lot of draws, so I'm going for race. Board can develop in quite nasty ways. In here, this tight player defends. I think there is argument even for check folding this sort of this sort of total trash against this player. We intend suited call behind us. Wow. That was pretty 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 nice from that guy. Now he checks again. Let's go for D late C but it should decrease like AX combos at least from his range when he checks. At least sometimes. If he, if he does happen to call the turn, then we just give up. King 3, I'm going for so Pretty great situation stack-wise to abuse. Abuse our big stack. Question is that how much these players folds and it's kind of tough to know. Queen Queen 7. Villain is not going to be folding anything better than my hand by C betting. I think I'm I'm going for check call this time. It's quite big, but well, let's give up. 
not totally sure which line would be better in general. And really horrible flop for our for our jacks here. And here I could even bet the bottom pair for value. For those well, if he's decent, it's not going to be profitable, and he had been quite aggro earlier, so I would think he could be defending too wide for that sort of hand to be profitable, so... And then 5, if we look from the Nash heads up, it would be up to 4 BB, so... And I think versus aggressive guy like that, it's... It's reasonable to go with Nash ranges on these stack, stack depths pretty nicely. And here we face a race. I'm just going to call and give him space to be making some sort of bluff plays. 6 did complete 9-7, but it should be pretty pretty safe card otherwise. And a 7 pretty active player, so I think by subbing we make most profits. And in here, I'm not folding the top pair, even though stack-wise this is not the greatest of situations. Backdoor plus, well, that works. Probably had some some sort of air, or maybe he value raised to 4x or 10x. Yeah, he would have probably gone broke here if I had just south the south the flop. Personally, I don't see much of point in in his race on the flop. Because I think there is tends to be simply more of the hands stronger hands continuing than weaker hands overall. Or it's at least quite close. And in here I'm just check calling down. In these sort of really dry flops, I don't usually use huge amount of check races overall. And King 9 with this stack depth, I pretty much have to be pet calling. $1.5 game, at least one. And this is really great, pretty much, pretty close to any two spot to be shoving on the bottom right, because when the small blind folds, BP has to be folding. In general, huge amount of hands, and if the small blind calls, it's still pretty shallow stacks, so it's not going to be like huge disaster for us. Now he did, did get into middle stack, basically. When it's unopened on our small blind, we can play any two rings against him. Like with, with, with this hand, I'm just going to be showing he can't really do, do anything else than find a huge hand to call with. If he doesn't want to be doing, doing so-called spite calls. 
and 76 is okay so but we did run into monster again pretty much bottom of my offsuit and basically lowest offsuit hand i would be shoving there against against recce player in general let's move this table here and ace five against rec really easy call from the bottom tier and we were we are ahead on the in here i could try to min race i will have some premium stuff to induce and total crap type of hands to min race fold with and if players are mostly playing with shoving or calling it's going to be really easy for us to have those total crappy hands in our min polarized min racing range because we don't get into any sort of post hop situations and this stack setup is again really great for us to be abusing just shoving 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 easy game of course sometimes we happen to run into hands and we happen to bubble boy even but most of time what happens is that these players are in the folding war situations and we will just keep stealing the blinds and they will dry on the really small stack and we will really often win the heads up when when the bubble does burst And good timing for monster hand on the right table. Willen is never never going to be folding against our shove. And in here king eight I think is going to be good enough to call. And this is again kind of situation that well we can also fold there. There is arguments either side. Against this range we should be in decent shape, but also by folding we keep the bubble situation better for us to abuse. And Queen Jack here I'm going to be calling because this player has been so so loose so far that it should be fine. But they do, do come up with a bit better hands, it seems. But basically against any decent player that is mandatory call or decent or loose player otherwise. Well, we end up in heads up, not, not in a way we would have liked the situation to go, but no reason to be unhap unhap unhappy about heads up anyway a6 i'm really happy to be just open shoving not huge amount of postal playability and if we win race and induce it's still relatively rare that we dominate the view line and this player on the right has been limping huge amount of time so i think by just shoving the king crab we win the pot really often so we can kind of bluff with the hand we can even get called by some weaker stuff sometimes but in here it's again pretty close but if the deuce was like eight for example i would definitely just check and give up on the flop but i think on that board it's still kind of okay to try a small c bet to see if we get the pop down or not a7 here with the antis should be fine not something i'm extremely happy about And in here I think Villain has been quite passive, so if he had continued on that board, I would have folded the turn. Now on the river, 
he does both. I think we are beat pretty often. He could still have like, for example, top pair that got, got scared of the flush draw coming in, so it's not like we can discount all the queen x from his range, and he could, well, I don't know if he would value pet like better 9x with that sizing, probably not. And he does check, but our hand is total air. Well, I'm just checking and basically giving up the pot. And for Jack Shooter, it is going to be profitable shove, basically against anyone. Nine five suited. I could try limping this time. Queen seven. Eight pp in the nest, but can we expect this guy to be that wide? Probably not. And any king is always profitable. Fifty fifty on the flop, but not not after turn. So one more game going. So after this week we'll check the results for today and do some some analyzing. Might actually be pretty important important game for result wise for this session because it's thirty dollar. $30 game, but for example here we can see that there is basically two fizzy players on the table. Not sure what, what, what players was other two earlier, but and this game player I think is not going to be the best of the regs here on so overall pretty good table or really good table on this four-handed situation at least. And the pocket trees, well after small blind call we can't be calling. But before that I think calling would be okay but quite quite borderline. Just how short our stack is. So we end up in the bubble And pretty great stack-wise situation for the bottom to be playing really loose. But the good side is that this small blind player might give us walks from his so far from his stats. So seven five off is not going to be profitable against this Reki guy. And there is five I'm going to be playing here. Just mean raising that if the small blind would shove and BB happens to call, we, we can then escape the situation and try to get into money. But unfortunately he seems to be shoving on the small blind pretty aggressively. And if he folds, definitely shoving this 10-9 shooter. And hope for fold. But even if he calls, our hand will have a lot of equity anyway. Okay, yeah, the Twitch. Duke did said in the Twitch that he's playing on the same table. Just read it now, he probably wrote that earlier. But yeah, hi for hi for Duke or J Bluff. It seems like you double up now. 
but good thing that you did did say it on the flop uh, on the chat. But there should be 90 seconds of delay, so no no reason to be hiding the table. I four, yeah. Let's see the flop and problem here is that even though we hit the bottom pair, it's going to be pretty ugly. The villain has a lot of king eggs, I think, and some traps. So overall, I think I still prefer to be just check folding the flop. And nine seven definitely shoving here. And again, get fold. <clears throat> we can actually check the results here already to save some time and king egg I'm definitely calling against small blind and we are dominating he does have the straight draw here eight six would be kind of too loose here, we don't quite cover the villain though. We can give him the pressure, but I think still that a 6 op is going to be better to fold. King Queen, I'm pretty happy happily shoving and I definitely don't want to mean race here because it opens door for small blind to shove much wider than he can call this shove. So for today, do I have any filters? Yeah, I do. And Ace Queen nuts, good shove from the small blind, as it was before with the Jack Eight as well. Just unlucky that I woke up with the big hand. <laughs> King Ten, we can limp, we can shove, we can min race. Everything is fine outside of folding. And seems like we are a bit down, but from this day game we get get into profits probably. King ten, pretty ugly board. Villain can have a lot of stuff to connect here. So no point to really see bet, but we can use this hand as a bluff catcher. Now ugly part is that when we call here, I think folding here is going to be too weak overall. Overall, but well, this sort of card is bad for us because if he had 8x, he has a straight now. If he had flush draw, he has plus. If he has 7x, he's probably value shoving it as well because we would not check the flop with a lot of AX. So this card we have definitely want to be folding, but some cards we should be bluff catching if we do call the turn. Because otherwise the turn call, call itself will become bad, basically, most of the time. Unless we have some specific read that Bill Lane will give up if he doesn't improve or has something. And in here we line can be trapping with something, but with the stack stack depth we have, we can't really be we can't really be folding. Now the question is that would there be value in betting turn shoving river? I think we can 
can go for that line because I think he can call, for example, king type of hands here. Of course, he can also have AX or bigger pocket than eight, for example, pretty easily. But I think this is spot where we can get called by by some of the. But yeah, even if I had point for check, he would have bet turn south river, so or most probably so. The end result would have been same. Only way to give up that spot would be that we have we have reached that he's only limping here as a trap toe. Yeah, when he does limp with five or six pp deep, it's quite easily a trap. So even check folding would be reasonable because of that. But yeah, I think. Either way is totally fine anyway. So pretty break even day overall. Let's check the hand then. I probably did mark something and if you have some sort of some sort of sort of uh, hands you remember from the session that you want to want to look at then please say so but seems i have marked actually quite a lot of hands so let's start to go through of these and close the poker stars something to remember because nowadays hold them resources hold them resources is not allowed to be running at the same time in here we seem to have a uh, really playable hand on the BP. So definitely calling here. And this really fizzy player will also call really often. And we check this fizzy player shoves like four times the pot. And in my opinion, when we have reads like this from the player and we have this this good top pair we can't be folding because he can play weaker made hands this way like weaker queens maybe even 7x he can have some plus draws which we are in pretty good shape overall unless it happens to be like 3x or like five six diamonds we are flipping against but I think calling here is mandatory when the open rate uh, when the brief appraiser does fold. And he had weaker weaker queen. Pocket force, yeah, this was the question basically here is that is it better to be open folding or shoving? We have really active looking small blinds, so I don't like to min race fold. Limping is kind of problematic because then we give free flop for the BB and there is going to be a huge amount of time three over cards. So is it is it better to be shoving or open folding? That's the not that software. That's the main question for me. So oh, 65, 35, 5, FGS1. And actually it seems kind of that it's it's pretty marginal. Marginal from those. And these ranges are tight. So I actually think that selling here was was going to be unprofitable. We can't tighten these ranges at all. They can easily be even wider. So, yeah, this was a mistake from my part. Is nine suited? We have pretty loose looking players. So, can we call? Can we call high tech sub? Sub here. And. I think this is pretty borderline, like ace 9 off I would be folding. And pretty much this is going to be the bottom of my AX suited hands. 
and here from the FGS ranges we can see that we can go quite a bit wider if the player is shoving this sort of range but it's pretty I think most often we will be facing a bit tight range here overall doesn't allow the edit range for some reason pretty weird let's run the hand again now it's now it works so if we say that we tighten his range a bit he might have all the suited aces i think Something like a7, a8, a8. All pocket pairs are totally reasonable. I think this sort of range would be closer from the even from the loose loose player. And then it would a 8 two that would still be okay. So I think a9 suited call here was against this player totally reasonable. Of course, if we had only 37 hands it's not huge sample but still indication that he's going to be going to be on the loser side most likely and if we look here villain should be shoving around 18 percent or so for the call to be good with the ace nine suited and i think that is reasonable king queen yeah this was the three bet situation that i defended well defend is totally reasonable his hand will play really really well post flop and i think this deep we don't want to be four bet shoving Forbet shoving hand like this. And if we think about the situation that we have 150 to call for the pot of 600, we basically only need around around 25% of equity against his range. And with this sort of hand, we will pretty much always get that one. And here the only question is that well when he when he see bets this big the nasty part is that i don't see much of fold equity there might be some but not huge amount but at the same time we have open-ended straight draw two overs and backdoor plus draw so if we expect zero fold equity here we have basically like 1,400 to invest for a pot of 3,400 if we calculate that with the calculator we need 41% of equity with the ICM side something like 40 43, 44% would, would probably be closer so let's say we want 44% against this range which does sound quite big so maybe folding folding would have been better here so equilator This sort of stuff we can do with flop chilla or equilator for example we put the flop in here jack 10 of spades and eight diamonds we select our hand and then let's say that the will line range is going to be a three bets free flop he has a lot of this sort of stuff here maybe he three bets nines and c bets it a bit as well Let's take toes. There is not of 
this sort of stuff I would assume quite easily. And I think we can add some of the... Well, let's assume that we are only against race calling rains. So if, we, if the range is, for example, something like something like this, what sort of equity we get? So it's 34 percent. So if we never get fold, I think this was probably better to be folding. I don't really see that calling would be up some. We just invest so much. So much compared to what is behind that. It's basically fold or some situation. So if we expect no fold equity at all, then I think folding would be a bit better here. But not not huge mistake to go either way, because we can sometimes get get fold from the wheel line. But it's going to be rare, so I don't hate it either way. Queen 6 suited, I decided to call here. And I'm not really sure about this call, but I think again in the NAS ranges it's going to be... It should be probably in here, but it's still pretty thin. Like Queen 8 suited should act, at least be here. And yeah, in the NAS ranges it's pretty clearly in our calling range. So the question is, does the villains have this sort of range? 67%. We do have really loose stats on him, so I think I think this call was reasonable. Even if he tightened his range to around 50%, it's probably still probably still okay. Well, not quite. So he, he needs to be shoving around 50. Closer to 60%. But I think against player like that it's going to be... It's going to be... A reasonable call. Can't really say that folding would be a mistake at either, but... I still think that calling is a little bit better. And here the question is that was the 8-9 off good enough hand in this stack setup? In vacuum, if we think that we have in small blind 10 pp or anti adjusted 9 pp stack, it's definitely hand we want to be shoving against most players, but uh, in this stack setup, this might have been bit too wide because we do solve against the chip leader close to bubble situation but like x9 suited should be definitely shoving hand and in mass it seems to be on the absolute bottom on the borderline of our hands if we line is calling this sort of range and i would assume that Rake in this situation is not going to be happy with weakest AX compose because he should think that our range is going to be going to be tighter than in general. Like 45 or 46 percent, it's going to be relatively wide for this situation. Like if we look only stack situation. But because it's close to bubble, our range is going to be tighter. But again, close spot. It's tough to say if the villain is folding weakest pockets or does he fold all of these weakest offshoot aces. Suited aces are probably calling always. And pretty much these good Broadway hands. So again, something that we could could just open fold also. And king, king king eight here. We could check this situation first by just in basic 
basic hand that it would be unopened, then it would be okay to be shoving. So the question is that when the big stack, big stack fish limps from the UTG, is it better to be shoving or folding? And these are always kind of problematic to analyze because we do have this allow limps here, but it's always kind of kind of a lot of work in these situations basically and as we can see it's going to be pretty heavy calculations when when the UTG is the limper and basically I think that going either way with this hand would probably be reasonable problem is that when when the UTG limps we don't have as much folding equity compared to unopened pot but at the same time we have more to steal so when when we get folds we also earn more get better risk reward so not really sure sure if it's better to be folding or shoving like king 10 suited for example i would be pretty happy to be shoving in this situation Yeah, so as uh, in the NES range is kind of, we don't have any limping range in the UTG shoes, but as we can see in here we have, and this is kind of usual limping guy that he's also raising decent amount, but he has really high VPIP, so he does like limping and flatting quite a lot, so... So I think we can assume relatively wide limping range. We can decrease some of the combos. We can use this hand weight, for example, and remove this some of this premium stuff from here. For example, like something like that. He might have something like, let's say. He likes to limp some of the weaker stuff, like... He does have raising range, so I would assume that he could be raising... At least sometimes these king-queen suited type of hands. So maybe something like that... Could be here. And when we shove, ah, this is calling, yeah. That is raising small and so this is the shoving range, shoving situation. This looks kind of weird <laughs> because of course he's going to be calling the but it doesn't show it here so I'm not yeah I said this is kind of problematic I don't really understand this that we are defining him to limp limp sometimes with the premium stuff but now it doesn't show it as calling Calling hands in here, so yeah, I just skip skip the analyzing and say that it's okay to go either way. And in here we had this really loose loose player open raising. We had king five on the bubble. I decided to solve it, and I think it should be fine against player like that.
So if we look here on the NAS ranges, we have the min raising range and we have a subbing range. And as we can see, subbing range is going to be pretty wide on the NAS assumptions. And this min raising range looks like this, that there is the inducing range here and there is the crappy range. In reality, on this wheel line, I think he's probably going to be raising less polarized range here. So I think he might be might be mean raising quite a lot of these stuff that should be open sound in in these assumptions. So I think we can pretty heavily widen these. Probably he will still still solve those weakest pocket pairs, but I think there can be a lot of well he should probably discount some some of those that he doesn't but I think he can still have a lot of stuff here. So for example if he's min raising this sort of top heavy range range and not using open sub then it becomes pretty nice spot for us to be I think well he it's also assuming pretty wide wide crawling ranges well not sure if we can discount a lot of those well it, now it becomes into any two but doesn't need a lot of changes to be a lot tighter. But as we can see that if he's folding folding a lot of time after he's been raising white drains, it it's reasonable. To be showing white drains. If he's clearly using Shoving range and using polarized ranges, then it becomes a lot, lot less good, so to say. If we unlock those and run the situation again, that he has polarized range and he's calling with the inducing range. Well, on this case, it would be pretty much on the borderline, so that kings would be pretty clear subs. So basically if we have this sort of really loose player and we don't assume uh, kind of trap heavy range then we can that he has good amount of folding still then we can be showing this sort of this sort of hands. Of course we also want to be flatting good amount of especially this sort of Broadway stuff so that connector hands that play really well post flop. But I think these sort of uh, small suited kings, for example, or small offsuit kings are more reasonable re steals or some small pockets and so on. Suited aces or a lot of aces, basically, also. Ace for suited. The question here was that if the small blind doesn't call, should we call here? And I think against this button player, we should be calling. Should be calling because he's less than 10 pp deep on the other asset, even even less so. In mass ranges, it is outside of calling range, but I think this is kind of tight range in my opinion. I think most players will be showing all the aces. Well, not necessarily that we can widen so that much, but with those changes it will become reasonable. So it's going to be pretty marginal. Pretty marginal, but I think this range on the for the loose player is, is still going to be a bit on the tighter side. But 
not close, but and that's why I marked the hand in here I went for so we don't cover the recce player here completely but uh, still if he calls here he has 500 chips left if he loses so it's going to be a pretty tricky spot for the big blind either way Oh, so that queens are pretty reasonable if Villain is calling this sort of range and I think this range is pretty reasonable. Uh, the main point here for the Villain is that when we saw we have gapped range so we usually don't have this sort of... Well we might have big ACs here I'm not totally sure if... Let's take take the advanced hand and use the additionally allow sub as well so this should be our min raising induce range in, in, with these ranges so there is again this totally crappy hand and there is premium stuff the min raising here with stuff like let's say King queen suited, for example, is problematic because, in a way, it's okay to min raise because if the will line defends by flatting, we have hand that plays really great. But at the same time, if he subs, uh, then it's really ugly hand to be to be folding. Of course there is some space for Villains that if we min race here he might be also 3 betting to 800 for example and if in that case we have king queen suited type of hand we have min raised I would quite often be subbing the hand because again the inducing range for the PP should be really tight as well but as default it should be in our subbing range And in general, what tends to be in my, my style in these situations basically is that I won't have this most premium stuff in my subbing range, but basically I'm not going usually this wide with the subbing as either, so I would probably be a bit tighter, like maybe something like this around. Because in general I don't allow to take really thin subs in this situation that we don't even totally cover the PP. And if that is the case that I saw around this range then Villain should be calling this sort of range. Some people might be a bit tighter, some people might be even a bit wider because they would assume that my range is capped as it is, so they might be maybe calling some 7s or 6s and king queen suited type of hand sometimes. Is 10 here, the cut of did sub, so this is for example a spot where uh, in if we look about this as a basic hand in S ranges, this is not going to be a call because it assumes that cutoff is subbing his ball range. And well, it actually is on the really borderline. But this is again situation that if I see this player subbing here with this sort of hands, I'm really surprised. Maybe he solves pocket eights. It's, it's probably on the borderline, whatever he induces with the hand, but probably like nines plus he's most likely inducing. Same goes with stuff like good aces. And I I do think that he can be solving like maybe weak weak suited aces. It's probably not solving 
that much of these. Maybe some ace then ace check. But I think there can be a lot of suited broad ways, for example. Maybe something like something like this might be quite close. Because this is again situation that well, if the villain has like uh, queen ten suited here, there is well, I probably seen as quite quite loose player overall, so I might be might be subbing hand like let's say jack ten suited here against the cut of min race or some pocket deuces would be really easy sub or some suited aces I could be subbing. Maybe something like king, king, queen, queen, jack, offsuit, and so on. And the pp also seems quite loose, so it's pretty ugly for the cutoff to be min raising hand like queen then suited and then fold, fold against the turn. So if we put that sort of range for his shoving range, then let's see. The ace 10 0 would, would become a lot better, but it would still be the bottom of the. Offsuit ACs. <clears throat> so I think this call was was good from my part, and it's quite nice. But overall, that there should not be that many better ACs in his subbing range. So it's pretty much the worst situation that he does have small pocket pair. Which in general is going to be also the most common situation. So if we have a read that we have a villain who is only selling small to medium pocket pairs here and nothing else. Well, quite rarely, rarely we have such a read, but if we do, then we would end up, end up in situation that he should be folding all the non-pair hands and that is basically because of the ICM side uh, we have quite a lot of quite big stacks here and so there is going to be decent amount of ICM and in here we could actually use also the different tool this analyzing becomes quite long but hopefully we have someone following still I'm not just talking alone here. Uh, the ICM Explorer. So if we want to study that how big the ICM actually is here, we can use this tool pretty nicely. So first let's add stacks here in the in the game we have so 26 well we don't have now the antis antis in place from this deck but it's not uh, yeah well i'm not sure if the order does, doesn't really count here i think but let's make it for clearer reading So 60, and we have antis of 15, so let's add those as well. And then we put us into caller and the cutoff on the better subbing situation and click the call pass button. So here and here we can see that in chip E we would, we would need 46% and we have around 10% ICM tax here or risk premium as it's called, called in this software so in reality we need 57% of equity and from this we can pretty easily understand that even ace king suited against only small pocket pairs it's going to be flipping basically so we don't get 56% of equity but if there is a lot of those weaker suited aces, some weaker offsuit aces, a lot of Broadway hand, hand and some pocket pairs, then we more easily get this sort of equity. So this is pretty nice tool to check what sort of ICM tax we have in different situations. 
and in here we are, are on the heads up. From these stats, will line seems pretty passive. Uh, in general, this would be decent hand to be shoving. It has good, good equity even when called, but this player looked so passive that I chose to just flat. And in here, we never fold. That's pretty much mandatory. So the question is, is it better to be shoving or calling? And I think both has points. Even if he sub here, he might be calling a lot of two over pairs. So it might have actually been the best play to just sub here against this sizing. But I think if he had bet like 400, I would in general like much more to call and allow him to continue bluffing if he wants. And here it would have probably been best to solve the river and hope he calls with some a, a high type of hand. Better hand is definitely calling, but basically the question is that is there more profit to check and give him one more chance to bluff with something like queen jack or h9 or so on. Because there's not really not that much weaker stuff that will call like a high will call, but well, maybe some baby pocket pairs if he min raises those, but it's actually pretty thin also to solve, I think, if there's only a highs that sometimes call, sometimes fold. We have quite a lot of hands I have marked here. Well, not that interesting, not checking all of these because of... And yeah, well, we could check this one. This was pretty passive player, but if we have a recce player here, I think 5-4 suited will have so much equity that it's pretty close at least. Well, it's still a bit outside if we line is subbing 70%. Some players can be subbing close to any two or even any two. So let's check around 85%. It will still be a bit, little bit outside, but definitely against passive looking player we should be folding. And King then suited. I chose to min race call against the smallest stack. Which should be pretty standard, I would assume. And basically, shoving range. We can have some some shoving range, but in general, I would not have huge amount of huge amount of stuff that I want to be shoving. In here, King Ten Suited actually is in the shoving range. But I think min raising is totally fine as well. And basically, as we see here, that if we do min raise king then suited and the small blind is shoving this sort of range, then we have pretty clear call with the king then suited. But this is probably be too wide. I think he can solve any a, any pocket pair. He can solve decent amount of suited aces, but maybe a bit tighter still. Uh, I think something like this would be quite reasonable. Those suited Broadway hands are still pretty nice subbing hands if he assumes some some folding equity on his side. So it would still be pretty clear race call. And yeah, this sevens was pretty decided to defend against the three bet and then the will line makes huge over bet. Problem here is mainly that if he's doing this with bigger pocket over pairs then we are totally crushed and if his rage is vacated on like two over cards and plus draw 
then we are basically flipping our bit behind of those as well. If that is the case, then, then this call is really bad, but on the other hand, if he sometimes have like a6 type of hand or some just two over cards he had this time, I believe, no diamond at all, then I think the call will, will become quickly pretty good. And here, this is actually hand that I could, could post on the hand analyzing area as well. In general, when Willan makes this sort of play, it's quite unlikely he has like straight here or quite rarely some set or two pairs. He might overprotect those sometimes, but. I think this is more often some sort of draw, but again kind of tricky spot that if he's doing this with decent draws and some of the better hands then this should be a fold, but yeah, he did have bigger jack here, uh, I lockboxed my backdoor flush. This could be something to post in the hand analyzing section. Section as well. Queen 5, I believe, is going to be pretty decent. If the small blind is. or if the pot players are okay, the BP is folding a lot. But I think this is pretty close to any two, even though the small blind should be calling relatively wide. So even if I have any two, and we can see that with this range assumptions, even seven dues off type of hand is really profitable. Almost half percent of price pool. So will lines need to be calling wider. Not sure what he had here. Kingdom of, it's outside of Nas, I think. Yeah, so even if I have any two, then king then off is going to be bad, basically, but it's not quite bad as bad as it would seem in FGS1, because it's also a situ situation where the smallest stack is in really ugly spots, so if we use FGS3, so that we use three hands in the future, I think his range is going to be a lot wider. And as we can see here, we are still subbing any two, but now small blind is calling a lot wider range, and I think King Ten Off is is really good call from the small blind here. Because of the future situations, is not going to be that bright for his his stack in this situation. But still, if he is calling wide, and even if the BP is calling wider. This probably stays any two for me. Well, now most trashy hands would start to be marginal. But here we can see the power of the big stack if if the other players are not making totally absurd calls. And in here, I think the king eight off call is is going to be fine with these bottom spot. This is again a spot where I could also have folded the hand because of future situations. The BP button would get little higher stack and I would have really great any two sub spots from the small blind if the button folds on the next hand for example. Of course even if I lose this hand situation stays the same but it's going to be tougher for me to solve wide when I'm next on the button because then this other sword stack is going to be clearly second stack so the BP sword stack will, will be calling wide and I probably can't, can't be solving any two reigns. So if he's solving this sort of range I think it can again be even a bit wider, like all suited kings. A bit more of these offsuit hands and suited hands. But against this range, 
it would be on the first two week of should king hand the king eight but i think still that king eight is going to be decent call but for future reasons it might be actually better to fold than call against that wreck and here we had someone i don't believe is a wreck i think i have marked him as a green player pc player but he also has really loose stats so player like this is probably going to have wide range here even if he's busy type overall or recreational might be the better word so if he's shoving 70 percent then the queen king king queen queen jack off is going to be really profitable call So he might not be showing that wide, but still, I think I think it's still reasonable to be calling. He needs to be showing a bit over 50%. And when when he looks so loose, I think I think something like this is reasonable. So yeah, I like to call. A7 off, four handed. And not situation I'm really extremely happy about, but I would assume this sub to be at least not, not unprofitable, but it's not going to be really great either, I think. Well, it's go actually going to be better than I talked in the NAS ranges or what I had here. FGS3, well, let's check, check FGS1 one, one range as well. It's even better in here. So, yeah, this is pretty standard. So, with this sort of ace, but as we can see, weakest offshoot aces are not like really great. Still decent. So, the Andes make, make it a little better than I, I thought. And in here, if the small pint had not called, I think pocket three should be at least something like pocket fives are call. Not absolutely sure of those smallest pockets. Yeah, in the NAS it would be okay call. Deuce it should be folded if the line is having this sort of range. But even if he's a bit tighter. It probably stays okay, but of course, after a small blind calls, then we have really easy fold. What they had here, yeah, pocket sevens, really premium hands, and we can't really, really say anything about the ranges from that. And in here, the question is, would it have? Would it, would it have been profitable to solve this pretty crappy hand? It might be okay, but it's also also kind of risky move. So yeah, and th with this assumption, pretty tight calling grains. Overall, it's totally break even. So. In practice, I would prefer to make this like min race folding hand more than shoving hand most of the time. But this situation does, for example, if we remove, let's say, 600 chips from the button and add them to me, that I basically cover BP10, it I believe will be any two shoving spot pretty easily because then if the will line is on his ma uh, not totally crazy he should not be calling by that all and then any two would be really really profitable and this is also if we have these sort of stacks 
it's troublesome to have min raising range that much because thinking player on the BP will understand that we can't raise call that wide. So they might not believe that we have often enough monster. But it does become become pretty much leveling game that how often we have have the monster and how often we just try to steal steal it cheaply. But yeah, this was today's coaching. The analyzing part went almost hour, I think. So <laughs> sorry for that. Kind of if if no one was following. A lot of good stuff, I think, if, if someone was interested or will be interested in the future from the YouTube. But yeah, thanks for the commentators and, and people watching and good luck on the tables or good night if going to sleep. Bye for now.